As you may know, I'm the author of Body Science, a book that deconstructs the disinformation put out by the establishment concerning physiology in general with an emphasis towards nutritional physiology, which has resulted in the U.S. being the most chronically ill society in all of human history. With all of our science and all of technology, the establishment has lied to you for 60 years to the extent where it has made the U.S. population the most ill society in all of human history. And then body science lays out our true physiology, how our bodies actually work so that you can understand the distinction between the truth and the lies. Recently, a study came out discussing the carnivore diet. Let's see what the study has to say. The Dr. Reality Vodcast with Dave Champion. The new study is published in Oxford Academic, and it is entitled Behavioral Characteristics and Self-Reported Health Status Among 2,029 Adults Consuming a Carnivore Diet. Why are study titles Oh, he's incredibly long. Anyway, I will put a link to the study down in the notes, and I encourage you to look at the study for yourself. There is a ton of very intriguing and interesting data. Well, at least it's intriguing and interesting to me. I hope it will be to you. However, today, I want to focus on just two aspects. One is the changes that occurred in the disease treatment of certain people who are in the study. And secondly, some of the old school medical dogma that still has to rear its head in these kind of studies. Okay, so the first one is those participants of the study who had type 2 diabetes and were using insulin to treat it, 92% of them stopped their insulin injections after they were on the carnivore diet. And I presume the 8% who didn't because I understand the physiology of how this works, they didn't because they were feeling insecure about letting go of their insulin. They'd been dependent on it for some time. Or perhaps they have a, a doctor who still practices the old school, no longer valid medical dogma and told them, I don't want you going off that insulin. So they decided to be obedient to the doctor. And speaking of old school medical dogma, I want to share a part of the study with you. Quote, Consistent with other low-carbohydrate diet studies, respondents reported a mixed blood lipid panel. LDL cholesterol, a major conventional cardiovascular disease risk factor, was markedly elevated, whereas HDL cholesterol and triglycerides were favorable. However, LDL cholesterol elevation when associated with low triglycerides may reflect a large buoyant lipoprotein particles, possibly comprising a relatively low risk subtype. We're going to revisit that in a moment. Indeed, the low ratio of triglycerides and HDL cholesterol is suggestive of high insulin sensitivity and a good cardiometabolic health. However, it is unclear whether the apparent benefit of the diet together with the reported weight reduction and improved glycemic control in the subset with diabetes, would counterbalance or outweigh any increased risk from LDL cholesterol elevation. Close quote. Now I want to quickly revisit a couple words and phrases from that part of the report. First of all, it telegraphs that this, the, the authors of this report understand the new science, and by that I mean science which is much more recent that has come out in the last, say, 10 or 15 years, as opposed to the dogma that's existed for 50 or 60 years. For instance, it says that high LDL cholesterol is, quote, a major conventional cardiovascular disease risk factor. Because conventional in this case means old school can't seem to get off the old dogma nonsense. Uh, there are cases when high LDL is a problem, primarily, almost exclusively, when triglycerides are high and HDL is low. The new correct paradigm that LDL cholesterol is actually healthful, it's a healing product that your body creates, 
and it doesn't matter what the number is, provided that your triglycerides are low and your HDL is good, that new reality, that new science is being accepted in the world of doctors and cardiologists specifically at the pace of molasses in wintertime. So these study authors, when they say that the risk factor is conventional, what they're saying essentially is this old school, no longer valid dogma. Then they discuss whether the benefits of the carnivore diet, which they discuss throughout the study report, whether those benefits are meaningful when juxtaposed against higher LDL cholesterol numbers, and they call that a potential risk. And we just covered that before, but I want to share with you that that the risk factor that they talk about with high LDL cholesterol, uh, especially on a carnivore diet, is no risk factor at all. They are just giving a nod to the establishment dogma so that the establishment doesn't turn on them like rabid dogs when they published the report. Let me explain what happens to the human body when a person eats carnivore style. When they do that, their body moves from existing in a state of glucosis to existing in ketosis. And those are the only two hemispheres in reference to this particular issue. Either you're living in glucosis or you're living in ketosis. I'm going to speculate that somewhere in the vicinity of 99.5% of the world's population currently lives in glucosis, which is the incredibly unhealthy mode to in which to live. It might surprise you to learn with all the dogma for the last 50 years about cholesterol, LDL cholesterol in particular, it might surprise you to learn that almost every single cell in your body produces cholesterol every single day, and that two-thirds, roughly, depending on the person, roughly two-thirds of the cholesterol that you have in your system on any given day is produced within the cells of your body, and that the dietary cholesterol that you consume is virtually irrelevant because if you eat foods that are high in cholesterol, your cells will, will produce less of it. And if you don't eat very much cholesterol at all in your diet, then your cells will increase their output. But here's the kicker. For people who live in glucosis, which again is the vast, 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 vast majority of the human race, what happens is to clear out toxic high blood glucose, the, the hepatic lipid system kicks in and begins producing an unhealthy version of LDL cholesterol. That's not made within the cells naturally as intended to happen when a body lives in ketosis. In glucosis, it's an unhealthy production of LDL cholesterol through the hepatic lipid system. You can learn more about the hepatic lipid system and how horrible it is for our health by reading Body Science. I should also mention that the oldest known hominin skeletal remain is dated at 1.5 million years old. So we know that our ancestors have been on the earth for at least 1.5 million years. And from then until eh, roughly six, seven, maybe 8,000 years ago, every single human being on the planet lived in a state of ketosis from the moment they were born until the moment they died. That is the way our bodies are intended to function in ketosis. So isn't it odd that the vast, 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 vast majority of humans today exist in this unhealthy state of glucosis where the hepatic lipid system is constantly having to create this unhealthy form of LDL cholesterol? Yeah, which brings on many, many, many of the, mo the worst chronic diseases, which is why the U.S. is the most chronically ill society in all of human history. And in terms of what I was just sharing with you, you can see the practical result of that when the study participants who had diabetes and they were using insulin, 92% of them stopped using insulin when they were on the carnivore diet which, more importantly than something called a carnivore diet, put their bodies in a state of ketosis. At that point, the hepatic lipid system no longer was operational, and they could drop the insulin and lose all their excess body fat in the process. You know, the establishment, I, I mentioned before, the lies that the establishment put out, are you, you can't number them. They, they, there's so many. They are so prolific. And I just want to give you an example of one of them. 
And that is that if a person does not get enough vitamin C, they will develop scurvy. You probably remember that. You were probably taught that in school, you know, when sailors were on ships and they didn't have access to things like fresh fruit, in particular, things like limes and oranges, they would develop scurvy. And of course, you were probably also taught that the solution, the cure for scurvy was the vitamin C that you'll find in those kind of fruits. So it seems rather odd that, I'm going to use myself as an example here, I've been eating carnivore for years. Now, I don't take any supplementation, so I'm not getting any vitamin C, and I don't have scurvy, and nor do other carnivores. <laughs> Isn't that odd? You were taught that vitamin C or scurvy, that's the equation. Now, granted, there are incredibly small trace elements of vitamin C in meat. However, it doesn't come anywhere close to the amount of vitamin C that the establishment tells you that you need in order to prevent scurvy. And yet I and other carnivores don't have scurvy. Why is that? Because the story about scurvy and vitamin C pertains to people who live in the unhealthy state of glucosis. When your body lives in ketosis, I don't want to go so far as to say it has a completely separate type of physiology, but I will say what your body does with macronutrients and vitamins and minerals is worlds different than what your body does or doesn't do with those same things when you live in the unhealthy state of glucosis. So how come you've never heard about any of this before? Well, because there is in the U.S. health or nutrition research world, there is a virtual blackout on ketosis. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted to share the study with you today. I'm very excited that somebody is finally doing a study on ketosis. Now, they're, they're referring to it as a carnivore study, right? They're studying the carnivore diet. But these researchers know damn well what happens when you eat carnivore. Your body flips from glucosis into ketosis, and they're well aware of that. So this is actually a ketosis study. The important part of this study is that they talk about the apparent health benefits of a carnivore diet, because you've all heard the criticism that it's a fad and it's extremism, but yet these researchers found that the effects on the human body were overwhelmingly beneficial. That's why I want you to go take a look at the study. And of course, 92% reduction in insulin for type 2 diabetics is, is very clear in, in and of itself, but there's a lot more data in the study. And there's also another place that you can learn all about the science, the, rea the hidden reality about ketosis, and that's in body science. Now, I need to be clear, body science, the study's talking about the carnivore diet, and I want to be very, very clear, body science is not a diet book. In fact, it never discusses a single force, well, I hate the word diet because that implies reducing calories, so I like to say a style of eating. So the, the book never addresses any style of eating. It doesn't address the keto diet, the carnivore diet, the paleo diet, the Atkins diet, nothing. It never mentions a style of eating. It is a physiology book. It explains to you what the lies are, how the body really works, the consequences of, I'm going to say, that, you know, again, probably in the high 90 percentiles of the American public believing most, if not all, of the lies that have been put out by the establishment concerning nutritional physiology over the last 50 or 60 years. So if you're looking to discover how to live healthfully in, in a fantastic state of energy and mental clarity and lack of chronic disease, rather than in this disease-causing state of glucosis, I want to encourage you to get a copy of Body Science. Go to drreality.news. Grab yourself a copy of Body Science. You will be so thrilled. And uh, I know people are saying, well, you would say that. You're the author. Yes, I am. But I'm not saying it because I'm the author. I'm saying it because when you close the final page of Body Science, you will say to yourself, holy cow, I cannot believe the lies that I've been fed and that I've believed for decades. And if you choose to act on it, you will become incredibly healthful, which you know, what's the old adage, which I happen to believe is true, by the way. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And even if you're younger, living in a state of glucosis, you are slowly building the platform for chronic disease and illness as you age. You probably see headlines all the time about we've never had more Americans obese, and Americans' health is going down, and colon and rectal cancers are surging. 
all of this is because of these lies. So I want to encourage you to find out the reality of it. <laughs> grab yourself a copy of Body Says while you're there. I might also encourage you to grab a copy of Income Tax Shattering the Mist, where I do the same thing concerning the false societal narrative that if you earn some money in America, you owe some to the federal government in the form of income tax. Total, total poppycock. And uh, Income Tax Shattering the Mist takes a look at, again, the history and the lies, and then breaks down what the law really says, what the Supreme Court has said, what the statutes say, what the regulations, Treasury decisions and Treasury orders say, and so forth. And it's crystal clear, and it's been consistent ever since 1913, the same story. And I even discuss internal IRS documents that say the same thing. The IRS never thought that anybody outside the agency was ever going to get their hands on. And I did, and it appears in the book. So again, if you're if you're into learning the truth and you dig liberty and you dig health, I want to encourage you to go to drreality.news, grab yourself a copy of Body Science and or Income Tax Shattering the Mist. And in doing so, you help me to continue to be here for you with these sort of fact-based presentations. And with that said, I'm going to go now have my steak for breakfast. Thanks for being here. 